Hello, my name is Adam Linder, and I'm a Big Fix technical advisor based out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. In this video, we'll be talking about how to create a Windows software installer package using the console. Before we get started, feel free to scan the QR code in the bottom left of the screen, which will bring you to my LinkedIn profile. If you have any questions after the video, I'll be happy to follow up with you. Big Fix is a powerful tool with a myriad of uses. One of the places I think it really shines is its ability to deploy not just the software packages provided by HCL, but arbitrary packages built into Fixlets by console operators. Most of the quote-unquote heavy lifting actually has nothing to do with BigFix. BigFix is just the glue that holds everything together. I follow the same three steps for every software package I create in BigFix. The first is to figure out how to install the program from the command line. This is often referred to as a silent or quiet installation. Different installers are packaged with different methods, but some combination of Googling and trying common command line flags will usually get you what you need. Next, I figure out how to detect if the program is installed at the version that I want using relevance. Don't worry if you aren't a relevance whiz. You can modify a single piece of relevance to do this for just about all Windows software. You can see an example of that relevance here on this slide. During the demo, I'll show how I derived it. Finally, I turn my installation commands into a fixlet. You usually don't have to put in much effort to go from working command line installation to working fixlet. So that's exactly what you'll see in this video. I'll create a fixlet to install 7-zip, first by figuring out the command line syntax, then showing how to determine relevance to check if it's installed at or above your desired version. The relevance that we use there will be able to be reused in packages you create in the future. And then next, we'll create and push the fixlet. Let's get into the demo. To demonstrate the most common type of package you'll build, I'm going to make a fixlet from the 7-zip MSI installer. If you can, try to track down an MSI installer for the package you're making. Silent installation for MSIs is typically one size fits all, so much so that as you'll see, BigFix will automatically put the installation syntax into our fixlet. It's not a problem if you aren't able to get an MSI. There's almost always a way to install software silently. You can often determine the silent switches for an executable by running it with the slash question mark, slash H, or slash help flags. I've downloaded the installer for the statistical software R, and as you can see, if I run it with the slash question mark flag, it tells me that I can use the slash very silent flag to install it quietly. In general, you want to pick whatever seems like it's least likely to try to get input from the user during installation. Other common flags are slash lowercase s, slash capital S, slash silent, and slash quiet, but your particular package may have special syntax. Since we're installing an MSI today, we'll use the MSI exec slash I command with the path to the installer to install it. I'm going to add the slash QN flag, which indicates that we want a quiet installation with no interface. Then, it may not be strictly necessary, but I like to include the slash no restart flag in case there's a bundled reboot that might kick a user off in the middle of the day just because we're trying to install some software. Then, because it's a silent installation, I like to log in verbose mode so that I can make sure that our installation actually worked. So let's run it. It's a good size log here. I'm optimistic that it worked. Check our start menu and 7-Zip's installed. So let's now look at relevance for figuring out whether a computer already has 7-Zip and if it's at the version that this installer package installs it at. I'm going to open up the Fixlet debugger, which is an invaluable tool for writing relevance in ActionScript. If you've dabbled in the world of relevance, you may have seen the RegApps Inspector. Programs that are good platform citizens register themselves with the OS, and the RegApps Inspector can return information about them. Let's take a look at the list of the installed RegApps by running names of RegApps. It looks like 7-Zip shows up in the list, which is great, but trust me when I say that not every program will. It's worth putting in the effort to write a slightly more complicated but much more extensible piece of relevance. So what's the alternative? Every piece of software installed on Windows shows up in the add remove programs list, so we just need to query that information. It turns out that information is stored in this area in the registry under HKLM, Software, Microsoft, Windows, Current Version, and Uninstall. 
There's a sub key for every installed program, but they're not that easy to read through. They've got these weird GUIDs, there's all this information here, but BigFix is really great at returning usable information from the registry. So let's go back to the Fixlet debugger and look at how we might get that information. So right here, I just have a simple query asking whether or not that key actually exists. So we're checking in the 32-bit and the 64-bit registry, and we're just asking it, does this key exist? So we know that key exists, so let's look at the keys of that key. So this is going to return us a list of all of the subkeys. So we could check, we would see that this matches. We were only looking in the 64-bit area, so that's why we get more results here when we looked over there in the GUI. But we have our list of keys. Now, I noticed while I was in there that all of the software has a value for display name. That's what's going to help us track down 7-zip. So let's go values display name of keys. So this returns a much more manageable list. You'll notice that some other stuff dropped off. That's built-in stuff that doesn't have display names as part of it. But we got 7-zip here. And we know that that's the value of the display name. So I'm going to write a new clause asking for the display version, because the two pieces that we care about here are, is the software installed and what version is it installed at? So you may have seen that we can get that with display version. And now we know which key we're looking for. So I'm going to use what's called a whose statement to narrow down the keys that we're looking at to just those where the value display name of it as string starts with 7-zip and run it. And so that gives us version 19.00.00.0. Now we have both pieces of information that we need to write our final relevance clause which is going to report back true if 7-zip's not installed or is installed at a lower version than what our package offers, and false if it's already installed at the version we're offering or higher. We can reuse most of this relevance clause from before. Remember that we were using this whose statement to limit the keys that we were looking at to only the ones that start with 7-zip. So now we have an additional piece of information that we want to limit our check to, and that is the display version. So the value display version of it as string is greater than or equal to that 19 number we got before. So running this is going to give us the location of that registry key, which we don't really care about. All we care is that it exists. But remember what I said before, we already have 7-zip, but this computer is reporting back true. That's because we need to add a not exists so that the relevance is actually checking, is it true that there is not a key that matches these criteria? And if there's not a key matching that criteria, it means that we need the software. Often the quickest way to get a package into BigFix is by using the software distribution wizard. So I'm going to go into all wizards and then select the Windows software distribution wizard. We've made a package for 7-zip19, so I'm going to put that in here. Click Next. Now I have to point it to the software installer, so I'll put that there. Click Next. This is going to attempt to auto-generate some relevance for us, but we already wrote a good relevance clause, so we're not going to use this. We'll just leave it and deal with it later. Same with this screen. We put in the work to write a relevance clause that's going to work for us, so we don't need what this is going to do. Click Next. So as I mentioned before, because this is an MSI, BigFix is smart enough to know, well, the way that I install MSIs is I use slash I, I do QN and no restart. We can leave this. I'm just going to put in that logging syntax that we mentioned before, just in case something goes wrong and we need to take a look. Once we click next and finish, it creates our fixlet. It's auto-populated the description with all of the OSs that we set our fixlet supports, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Over here on the Relevance tab, it's got all that information again, so I'm going to simplify it a little bit and just say Windows of Operating System. I'm also going to constrict it, because this is a 64-bit installer, to only 64-bit operating systems. So we'll do x64 of Operating System. These are properties of the Operating System object, 
that you can find more information about on the Big Fix developer website. Finally, I'm going to add in the relevance clause we came up with before to detect 7-zip. Over here on the Actions tab, you can see what Big Fix has auto-generated for us. We have a prefetch command, which handles downloading the payload from our server. We have an extract command, which handles extracting the compressed payload. And then we have this wait command. So wait is one of a few action script verbs. Action script is the language that fixlets are written in. So what wait is going to do is it's going to run whatever command comes after it, wait until that command posts an exit code, meaning that the command has finished, and then it's going to move on to whatever the next command is. So if we had a handful of commands here, it would run line three, wait till that process completed, run line four, and so on. So the other thing to call out here is that this doesn't just say MSI exec slash I slash QN. It uses what's called relevance substitution. So relevance substitution is when you put the relevance language between some curly braces. It turns pink, purple, whatever you want to call it. And it returns information that you didn't have to hard code. So the reason it's doing this this way is you could picture this as C colon slash system 32 slash MSI exec .exe, but maybe on someone else's computer, MSI exec is in D slash system 32 slash MSI exec or what have you. So this is just using relevance to determine the absolute path of MSI exec before it installs it. Similarly, it's giving us the absolute path to the relative folder underscore underscore download, which is where extracted payloads live. But that's it. Everything else is what we provided, so we can save the fixlet. In a couple minutes, this will become relevant, and I'll push it. We're relevant for the fixlet, so let's just push it and make sure everything worked. I've got my big fix log pulled up here, so we should be able to see momentarily that it learns that it's got an action to run, and it runs it. There's more information about the big fix log in another video on this channel. Here you can see it become relevant. And then just like that, 7-zip downloads and installs. Looks like our fixlet works. That's our video on creating software installation packages using the Big Fix console. This slide has links to some additional resources. The forum is a particularly good place to go if you're stuck. Feel free to scan the QR code on the right to connect with me on LinkedIn. Thanks for watching.